To get into Azure, you're going to need to have an account. Fortunately, Microsoft has made that pretty easy. To log in, you need to go to studio.azureml for machinelearning.net and then click sign up, choose the free workspace option, and then sign in. So here I'm typing in studio.azureml.net. You're brought to this screen and you have options here. You can sign up or sign in if you already have an account. Since you don't already have an account, we'll sign up and then we'll choose the free workspace. And this is enough to you know, give you some significant storage and to be able to do the work that we need to do. Microsoft has a couple of things that you can do. They have a work or school account set up with BYU so you can use your BYU net ID uh, at byu.edu and your net ID password and it will go ahead and they'll sign you up that way. Or if you have a personal Microsoft account that you use with Xbox or other things that will also work. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my byu.edu. It takes it to here and so it apparently looks at this .byu.edu and takes you to your your BYU account and then logs you in as you. Now I already have a Azure experiment set up here so I can sort of walk you through an example. So I'm going to give you an overview of what is in an experiment and how Azure works and then I'll walk you through the process of actually setting one up. The way Azure works is very much like other data mining tools in the sense that you're going to have to have data, you're going to need to split the data or partition the data, you're going to need to have an algorithm that you're going to attach to the split data. Off of that split data, from the training data, you're going to train your model. From the validation data, you're going to score the model. So when you do a split, there are two little handles down here, or connector points, and you connect one to the training model, and then you connect one down to scoring your model. After you've scored your model, then you can evaluate your model. So all things like the rock curve and the confusion matrix, or if you're doing a numeric prediction, model quality indicators such as root mean squared error and R squared will be shown down here. We're going to have to be able to get data and you can see that I've got some data here but you can add data by clicking here and then upload a data set from a local file so here's our car buyer data set recognize that it's a CSV file in this instance so here's my car buyer data set once you have a data set in then you can go to do experiments so how do we create a new experiment so here in the experiment pane, we can select new and select a blank experiment. This brings us up to the Azure workspace where we can set up the pieces of what we need to do to complete an experiment. And so we'll go to our save data sets and we'll bring in our car buyer data set. Then we need to go down to our machine learning and you'll notice that there's main categories down here. There is a initialize a model. Inside initialized models are where we get to do the different things that we usually do such as do a class select classification models or regression models or set up clustering. So we'll we're going to do a classification in here. So what we would this is where we would go down and pick from among the algorithms that we're going to pick so that's where that is we also need to be able to do our data transformations we need to be able to split and set up our data so down here in sample and split we're going to select split data and so I will drag split data over here underneath this data set now you'll notice that there are handles, there are little connector handles here. So I'm going to drag this down here to this split action that's going to take place. And then I'm going to tell it that I yes, I do want to split along the rows. So 
So that's splitting amongst the records. I'm going to have 60% of my data is going to be in my training, and that will leave 40% for the validation. I want that to be those records to be to be randomly split amongst those partitions, and I'll set a random seed to be one here. And now we've got that set up. So this will affect the, the data split. And now we, what we want to do is we want to train the model. So the next thing we want to do is we want to train the model and put this up here. Now to train the model, we need to input data into the model. So I'm going to bring this connector over here so that we're going to bring our training data down. I also need to have a model. So I will go up and select my boosted decision tree. This is a gradient boosting type of algorithm. All right, so now I have to connect my algorithm to this training event. So now we've got the data in and we've connected up our algorithm. Now before we can train the model we have to select which column is going to be the outcome variable. And so what we want to do is we want to take buyer and put that over here. So now we've selected the outcome variable. Now the model can be run and it can train. Now we want to score the data. So we'll score the model. The process of scoring will take the validation data, apply the model to it, and then associate a probability with each one of these records in terms of how likely a person is to be a car buyer. You'll notice there are two handles here, so we need to be able to connect the trained model in here, and then we need to be able to connect this validation data that's coming out of the split into this connector right here. And that will allow us to score the model, so we can run that, run selected. So at this point, we've done our scoring. And if we were to go in and visualize the results of the scored data set, we'll be able to see how likely each person is to be a buyer. So this is what the algorithm thinks the probability of each one of these persons are in terms of their likelihood to buy a model. You see many of these probabilities are quite low. If you click over here on the scored probabilities, it will also show you that most of these people have a very low probability of being a buyer. And then once we get up to 0.9, once it shows you that there's a small group that has a very high likelihood of being a buyer. And so that's useful. We can see this histogram. Once we have our scored model now, what we need to do is we need to be able to evaluate. So evaluate is where we can uh, take and determine the outcomes in terms of model quality. So since this is a categorical classification, then this is where we will get our confusion matrix and our rock curve and so forth. If we were doing a regression or where we're trying to predict a numeric outcome, then evaluate model will have things in it like calculating the R squared and the mean squared error. To be able to do this, we're going to connect our scored model down here. And now we can evaluate the model. And so we'll run this one. Checkbox shows up when it's done. And now we'll be able to visualize the results. So here's our rock curve. You can see the model did very well in terms of selecting the most likely candidates to be buyers. It got them correct for quite a while before false positives started to creep in. Here is our confusion matrix information. So here's our true positives and false positives, our false negatives and true negatives. It tells us our accuracy rate. So 1 minus the error rate would be this. And so our error rate here is 0.037, or 3.7%. You can see the, sort of see the connections in here in the confusion matrix. This dumps out a variety of, of useful statistics. So what is it doing? Uh, what it's doing is it is figuring out our sensitivity. So our sensitivity is 67.3%, uh, and that is 
This is a typo. This is actually our re also recall. So in this tool, it calls sensitivity recall, not specificity. We'll take this one off. So our recall or sensitivity is 67.3%. And so what that means is, is that out of the actual positives, we are correctly picking out 67.3%. Precision is coming down this row. So when we call something, when we predict something to be a positive, how often are we right? Well, we're, off, we're right 37 out of 49 times. And so that's 75. So when we think something is going to be a buyer, 75.5% of the time, that's actually true. Specificity actually says of the negatives, what proportion we're able to identify as correct negatives. And so 733 out of 745 is how often. So when we call something a negative, it usually is a negative. We're very, we're, we do a good job that way. Accuracy is the number of corrects. So it's the positive, true positives, and the true negatives added together divided by the total. And then, of course, 1 minus this will give you your error, and so, which is also can be calculated by adding 12 and 18 together and then dividing them by 800. So this information just sort of shows you how going from this information, how this information was able to be calculated. Now that we've completed this process, we can close this and save our work.